Welcome to our presentation on the historical background of endocrinology and some definitions of hormones. This presentation will discuss the historical perspective of endocrinology. We are also going to discuss some definitions of hormone, characteristics of a hormone, as well as the problems with the classical definition of a hormone, and we are also going to differentiate between a hormone, an enzyme, and a vitamin. Slides to follow will discuss some important figures and scientists who are renowned for their notable contributions in the field of endocrinology. First on the list is Arnold Berthold. He was best known for his pioneering experiments in endocrinology. He discovered castrated cockerels, failed to develop their combs and wattles, and failed to exhibit male behavior. Replacement of one or both testes back into the abdominal cavity restored the lost function. This diagram shows the first endocrine experiment conducted by Arnold Berthold in the year 1849. This experiment aimed to demonstrate the role of hormones in animals, particularly of the hormone testosterone in roosters. Specifically, it aimed to identify the effects of the hormone testosterone in the behavior through castration of roosters. In this experiment, Berthold surgically castrated six healthy roosters. Then he divided the roosters into three groups of two roosters. The group one served as a control group where the roosters or the testes of both the roosters were removed. For the second group, the roosters had only one of the testicle removed. Then after that, the roosters were re-implanted with their own testicles. The, for the third group, also, only one of their testicles were removed, and the roosters were transplanted, the testicles of another rooster, as shown in the figure. The results of the experiment showed that the castrated group were less aggressive, less masculine, and had lost their interest towards hands. Also, in terms of the common wattle, the common wattle are considered to be small. small. For, the, for the other group, for the roosters that had reacquired their testicles, so they behaved normally as in any other uncastrated rooster. And in terms of the common wattle, they also have a normal no common wattle. And in terms of the behavior, also, uh, they still retain the behavior of uh, interest and hence, normal crow, and the aggressiveness. This experiment concluded that the testicles release a hormone, testosterone, that influences aggression and dominant male behaviors. One of the important figures in the field of endocrinology is Thomas Addison. He was known as the father of endocrinology as he was the first person who discovered Addison's disease, which is an endocrine disorder. We also have Oscar Minkowski and Joseph von Merrin. In the year 1889, they demonstrated that surgical removal of pancreas from dog produced a disease later known as diabetes mellitus. Their work led to the recognition of insulin in the control of diabetes mellitus in men and dogs. The diagram shows Professor Oscar Minkowski and Joseph von Mary. We also have Ernest Tarling and William Baylis. They are Canadian physiologists who discovered that a substance liberated by the small intestinal mucosa stimulated the pancreatic juice flow, and the, the active substance was named as secretin. Starling in the year 1905 also introduced the term hormone. Another historical figure in the field of endocrinology are Charles Best, the one on the left, and Sir Frederick Bunting, his professor. They demonstrated that the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas produce a substance that lowers the blood glucose. 
Sir Frederick Banting, Charles Best, and their another colleague, John MacLeod, at the University of Toronto in the year 1921, was credited for the discovery of the hormone insulin from the pancreas. We also have Philip Hench. In the year 1949, Hench and co-workers isolated a hormone from the adrenal cortex that was termed as compound E, later as cortisone, that relieved some of the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. For their discoveries relating to hormones of the adrenal cortex, their structure and biological effects, Hench and, and his co-workers earned the Nobel Prize in Physiology for medicine in the year 1950. We also have doctors James Tate and his wife Sylvia Simpson Tate. They made an indelible contribution to life science and medicine with the isolation and characterization of the hormone aldosterone. Aldosterone is the most potent mineral corticoid produced by the mammalian adrenal cortex. The figure on the top left shows the contributors of the original manuscript describing the isolation of aldosterone. We also have Frederick Sancher. In the year 1953, he studied and established the amino acid sequence for the hormone insulin. He earned the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in the year 1958 for his work on the structure of proteins, especially that of insulin. We also have Dr. Vincent Duvignod. Dr. Duvignod created a synthetic form of oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that is involved in childbirth. Synthetic oxytocin is now regularly prescribed to induce or augment labor. He was also credited for the elucidation and synthesis of the hormone vasopressin via the manipulation of the ABP gene. Another is Geoffrey Harris. Geoffrey Harris is a British physiologist and neuroendocrinologist, often considered as the father of neuroendocrinology. He is best known for showing that the anterior pituitary is regulated by the hypothalamus via the hypophyseal portal system. We also have Earl W. Sutherland, Jr. He was an American pharmacologist and biochemist. He won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in the year 1971 for his discoveries concerning the mechanisms of action of hormones, especially epinephrine, via second messengers, namely cyclic adenosine monophosphate or cyclic AMP or GAMP. Another historical figure in the field of endocrinology is the Biotechnology, the American Biotechnology Corporation, which is the first biotechnology company in the world, the Genentech Incorporated. In the year 1978, recombinant insulin, human insulin, was first produced in E. coli by Genentech. The diagram shows the team behind on the recombinant insulin, uh, recombinant insulin in the year 1978. And on the right, we have the Genentech's first biofermenter in the year 1978. We also have Rosaline Susman Yellow. She was an American medical physicist and a co worker of the 1977 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the development of the radioimmunoassay technique. She was the second woman and the first American-born woman to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. The slides to follow will enumerate some definitions of a hormone as authored by the Nobel Prize winner, Bernardo A. Jose. As a short introduction to Bernardo Jose, he was a co-recipient of the 1947 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for discovering the role played by the pituitary hormones in regulating 
the amount of glucose in animals. According to Jose, hormones are secreted by living tissue and uh, it is also present in small or trace amounts in microgram, nanogram, and even picogram. Hormones are also uh, secreted into and travel in the blood to a specific site of action and that is the target organ. So hormones are also not used as a source of energy but acts to regulate reactions to produce an appropriate response of the organism. So that response could either be positive or negative but it is usually positive. We also have here you know, some important characteristics or properties of a hormone. So hormone is considered to be an organic chemical agent. It is liberated by living cells of an organism in a restricted area. It is also liberated into the vascular system or tissue fluid. It is also generally effective at some distance from the source and uh, its action could result in the coordination of the parts of the organism. Hormones also have a short half-life in the blood. They are degraded after action and target, this allowing further and for unnecessary action of the hormone, and their half-life can be increased by the process known as glycosylation through the sialic acids. Another characteristic of a hormone is that it regulates intracellular biochemical reactions at targets. Uh, usually, these are involved in some types of secretory action of a cell. Another is the distant site of action of the hormone is referred to as the target tissue, and the target tissue has a specific receptors for that particular hormone. We also have here you know, some problems with the classical definition of hormone. So as time goes by, there are certain substances that are included in the list of the hormone because of their hormone-like properties. So that is why the classical definition of the hormone may not apply up to this uh, point you know, in time. So one of the problems with the classical definition of the hormone is that the hormones are not necessarily produced by ductless glands now because there are certain hormones uh, or hormone-like substances that are uh, that, that can also be secreted you know, by a small group of cells or even by individual cells. Secretion of an endocrine gland or an endocrine cell is also not unihormonal. So multiple active secreted substances can be produced by uh, one type of cell. Another is most hormones have multiple production sites. No? So this, uh, these are you know, some of the divisions with the classical definition of a hormone. So another um, division so from the classical definition of the hormone is that the hormones are not uh, secreted only into the bloodstream. So other hormones can be released you know, into the lymph or in the ECF, therefore always not blood-borne. So hormones do not always have a distant target site so because some hormones can act paracrine or nearby or even autocrine or a hormone can also act on itself. A hormone can action can, can, cannot be stereotyped and it, it can vary you know, according to the nature and the state of the target site. It may be determined by the expression of the receptors on the target cell. We also have here you know, some comparison between a hormone, vitamin, and enzymes. So the first is the hormones are uh, protein, generally protein or steroid in nature. So um, hormones are produced by the testes, the ovaries, and the adrenal cortex are considered to be, they are classified as steroids. And a uh, majority of all the other hormones are considered to be protein you know, in nature. Another is uh, hormones are absent in food and they are only synthesized by organisms. Both animals and plants require hormones while vitamins are required by animals and not by plants. So another uh, comparison is that uh, when there is a hormonal disorder, so that, that hormonal disorder is known as a functional disorder. Uh, meanwhile, when there is a loss of the vitamins, 
that uh, condition is usually known as a deficiency disorder. Another uh, comparison, uh, hormones can accelerate no, as well as inhibit or retard a chemical process. Meanwhile, enzymes can only accelerate no, a chemical process. Hormones are carried away from its place of production to a target organ via the blood, while enzymes work where it is produced. So although in our uh, a while ago, no, for our uh, deviations in the uh, classical definition of a hormone, we said earlier that the hormones can also act through a paracrine or autocrine function. Hormones uh, cannot be stored in the body, so their regular production is necessary. Hormones are also specific in their function. Different hormones have different target organs. Hormones are produced in one animal and it can cause the same effect in other animals. So hormones are generally considered to be uh, not, no, they are not species specific. Another comparison is that the hormones are used up you know, in the reaction while the enzymes are not used up you know, during a reaction. Hormones like vitamins, enzymes, and minerals are required in minute quantities.